In this video, I'm going to show you how to fold the Origami Tessellation Adulthood designed by Ilan Garibi and Chagai Golan. I use a square sheet of kami with a side length of 23 centimeters or 9 inches, and the finished model then has a side length of about 13 centimeters or 5 inches, and a height of about 7 millimeters or 0.3 inches. Now, I don't actually recommend you use kami, but I'm using this paper because it's widely available and I wanted to show you it is possible. However, if you have access to heavier paper, especially if you have access to elephant hide, I highly recommend you use that because the model is much sturdier and so much more beautiful and more fun to fold. So this is one I did from elephant hide. But I'll use kami, which also conveniently has a white side and a colored side. And we need to start with a 32 division square grid. So let's go ahead with that. We're first going to fold edge to edge repeatedly until we have 32 divisions on each side. And I like to always reverse the creases so that all of the creases on the color side are valley folds first and then mountain folds to strengthen them further. This will make the later steps easier. If you need more guidance on how to fold a 32 division square grid or if you're interested in some tips on how to fold it very precisely, I've got a video on that that you may want to check out. Now, once your 32 division square grid is done, we are going to add some off-grid creases. For this, we first want to find the exact center. And before that, actually, I like to reverse all of these last creases so that even the last set um, is folded back and forth so that the direction isn't as severe as right now. You can see this real zigzag shape and afterwards it will be more rolled in and flat. So let's go ahead with that first. Now that we've done that, we can really find the center for this. Just bring two of these corners together and then I just like to make an extra sharp crease by using my thumbnail like the top of it and pressing it into my index finger and then you can see an uh, extra sharp crease here and we want to go one below that and I like to actually for tessellations use one of these embossing stylus and a metal ruler and score in the lines before I crease them it makes things a bit easier and for this, I like to use a surface that uh, has a little bit of give. So I'm using a cutting mat here, and you could use anything you really like. But if it's um, a book even, um, it's better than a wooden surface. So here we have the center marked, um, very nicely visible. And now we're going to go one row below that. And then we have this crease line, and now we're going to start in this point which is one column in, and then we're going to go four up and one to the side and make this long diagonal crease along these four small squares on the grid. And then we're going to go down and we're going to make a zigzag seven times. So I like to just take my point and put my ruler there and then count one, two, three, four and get that point and then just run along there so that I can nicely mark where I want to put that crease. And I'm not sure whether you can see that, perhaps right here. And um, I just add all of these and after that I make them into stronger creases. And if you don't have something like this, you can also use an empty pen or you might even be able to use like um, anything that is quite hard and pointy and you just want to run it along the paper so that you have a nice indentation. So now we've got one, two, three, four, five, two more to go. 
Now before I add the other score lines, let's just make these into mountain folds so that we can really see what's happening. So what I like to do is I actually like to turn it like this so these are all of the corners and just press along that indentation. The paper will want to crease exactly there and then to make it nice and strong again take that edge of your thumbnail and run it like this with the paper in between to make a nice strong crease going bit by bit so that you don't damage the paper. So now you can see you have a much stronger crease than before with the crease lines. And you just continue strengthening those creases And sometimes I even like to kind of get those grid lines in place so that I know that I get a nice and precise point. This just makes the model look that much nicer in the very end. So here you can now see all of these zigzag shapes in total, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now rotate and again find the center, mark it, and then go one row below that central grid line and again add seven zigzag shapes and the same here and over there. Those are six, one more to go. And again, strengthen. Now all the pre-creasing is done and we need to collapse that pattern. For this we're going to make mountain folds along the grid going up to these points. So I'm going to start just on this side pinching this mountain fold and then trying to pinch that, perhaps even making a small valley fold in there just to get that point nice and precise. Then we'll have a valley fold next to it and then a mountain fold again. So we can bring these two grid lines together like this. And again go up to there and then continue with the next one. And there are different ways in which you can collapse this pattern but this is the way that I liked to make it on my first two attempts. These I'm going to keep flat because we're going to collapse them that way, so don't collapse them right here, but keep them quite open. And then continue all the way until you have all of these seven zigzag shapes in a halfway collapsed shape. Now, especially with Kami, um, this, this paper is quite thin, it's a bit harder to collapse because the paper doesn't quite um, as easily pop into place and stay in place. So if you have thicker paper this is going to be slightly easier. But as you can see here, if you work carefully, Kami also works quite okay. So now we have this and this last one we can even fold up like this. And if you want, you can secure this with a, um, a clip or something like it. I will do that right now, but I may remove it later just so that I can ease up the paper a little bit while I'm working on the other sections. But let's see how I can fare with this being secured. And of course you can use a very normal paper clip for this too. Um, it might come off sometimes and then you just need to re-secure it. So now here I'm again just going along here 
And what I find helpful here is that you try to have a vadi fold run along this grid line where the other end of this zigzag stops. And if you have that, you know, you're already halfway into getting a nicely collapsed tessellation. So just pushing these in and as I mentioned before, if you have quite sturdy paper, this is a bit easier to achieve, but with patience you can also use thinner paper, just trying to make all of the paper fall into place. As you can see here, I'm really just trying to have that pop into place and remember that valley fold that I was talking about, like this and that, and here the valley fold. And then we're almost there. This is the last one. Just Popping that down like that so that we have this nice rounded shape and then perhaps secure this one too just to get it out of the way. And then continue with this section and as you can see this is a mountain fold and here we've got a nice valley fold already and you could try and push this in right now. Um, but it may come undone again, but let's try still because the paper is still quite flexible right now. So don't be too shy about it, it's just paper. And just push it in and if it's too tense you can always release this clip to, um, to release the tension. So, but here you can see now we have this turned inside out. And when we have that, we can now continue here with, again, pinching those sections up and down so that we have mountain folds leading up to the tips of this zigzag pattern. And as you're collapsing, some of the work you previously did might come undone slightly. Don't worry about that, that's totally fine. You need some space for the paper to work. And that means, means sometimes you need to let the paper move a bit more than you maybe would wish for. Um, and that's absolutely fine. It's not a process of just going and folding everything just once. Sometimes you have to refold it just like that. So now I'm getting a lot of paper tension here and I don't like that too much. So I'm going to release these just for a little while to get this to fall into place more nicely. So now I can press on this crease to get it into a valley fold. And I'm working very carefully. The thinner the paper, the more carefully you need to work in some ways and just pushing this so that I get a shape that I like and then I might re-secure these just so that they don't come undone too much and this one too and this I'm going to keep just so that I have a bit more room to move so now here we have these mountain folds and I might even start in the back here because that's the tough spot and when I have that one the rest will be a bit easier. 
so I'm going in there just very carefully pushing it up from the back so that it, it's going to come up and then I can pinch it up. And so you can also do this from the beginning on, just working from the inside, although I do prefer working from the outside. But in this case, perhaps it's quite nice to try and get that center halfway in the right direction now already. You can see here you have a small square and this small square is basically going to be untouched and slightly covered by the other creases. So we're doing this and I'm going to start here again now because I just find it a bit easier and I think uh, that this is sufficiently massaged into kind of the right spot in uh, that place already. And you know, with tessellations, once you have the creases in place, you can play around with um, figuring out how you want to get the creases in place, especially with this more simple pattern. Of course, there are patterns where there are, uh, you know, tried and tested um, methods on how to get all of the pleats and intersections done. Um, but here, you don't really have any of those pleat intersections. So in some ways, it's, it's a very simple molecule, which you can then tessellate um, into you know, patterns that are more elaborate by repeating them over and over, which is um, what tessellations are all about. But in this case, I actually find a single molecule, as we're folding it right now, um, quite beautiful and stunning and uh, in itself uh, a wonderful model without it actually being tessellated. But it's nice that you can do that. So, now we're at this point where I've basically got all of them halfway collapsed and I'm just pushing these again into place and I'm going to secure them to then work from the reverse of the model to get the rest nice and tidy and then fully collapsed. So we've got all of these and let me show you what I've got once I have this secured. So now you can see we've collapsed all of these sections and we kind of have all of these zigzag shapes popped up and in some places a bit tidier than in others. As you can see this one looks quite nice. This is not too bad which we can push in and out a little more. And this one, the first one is going to be the uh, least tidiest usually because you've been pushing around the model and that influences the, the first set. So you may need to clean it up a little bit more. And uh, then this one here too. So I'm just pushing a little here and there to get mountain folds and valley folds like that. And here, this last one, you can see that almost disappeared completely. So I'm just going to go on that section and press from behind to bring that up a little bit. And especially bring that mountain fold back up. Can you see that? This is the fold that is basically flat. And we want that to be a mountain fold. Right there. And we can even secure it in here with the other ones. I just find clipping makes things a bit easier and why wouldn't we want to, want to make the collapse easier? Um, of course, if you prefer not to use these extra tools, feel free to, um, to do differently. So, okay. So at this point I like to flip this model over and here you can also see all of these crease lines and what I want to do here is this section 
I want to flatten down so that it's flat. You see I'm pushing this very carefully just on the diagonal creases so that I'm flattening it down like that. And then I'm going to go on here and this looks pretty good. And here I need to push it in a little bit, push it in and especially here. Can you see that? This is quite three-dimensional because this needs to go in so that we're going along these valley folds right here. So I'm just pushing in quite carefully and sometimes if I'm not careful enough I need to push out that mountain fold again or even use my embossing stylus here to press that into place. And then we can go on to this one. And here again you can see that this even needs to be pulled apart just a tiny bit to clean it up. And continue. Here I'm pressing from the back to bring up that mountain fold, then bring in that valley fold, like that. And then here you can again see a big three-dimensional shape which we want to push in and down by pushing on these diagonals here. And here you can start seeing a twist forming. So let's look at this section right here, pushing it in. And maybe you just need to go around once until you have all of this pushed into place especially if you're using heavier paper, that might be the case. And maybe you need to go around more than once, just ensuring that you make the paper go along the existing creases. Just carefully pushing maneuvering the creases so they fall into place. You can see now this is flatter already and here you can see that inner square with four small grid squares which is being covered up partially and I'm pressing on it right here so that I'm really making it go down. Can you see that? And here just trying to get that to flatten down. And these are the smallest motions you're really making here, which I hope you can see. And all of these small motions add up to a very precise, beautiful model. And here you can see it's almost flat. And the model will not be completely flat. As you can see here, you have a, a height of about one grid square, right? So we want to achieve that here too. And I'm just going to push this together here. And here you can always see these zigzag shapes that you want nicely popping up and here one too. And then when you are pretty much at this stage, what you want is that this model stays in place like this. And well, if you undo these, they're going to come undone. Now what you can do, of course, is glue all of this together. There is no issue with that at all. But, you know, uh, being a purist, I do prefer not working with glue. So, um, one way to achieve that same effect is by uh, dampening the paper so that um, the fibers get soft. And then having the model kind of in the shape that you want it to be and letting it dry in that shape so that then the, the fibers are kind of slightly um, 
bent in the way you want it to. And this works really, really well with a paper like Elephant Hide because it gets really, really stiff. But here, um, I did the same for Kami and it worked too. It maybe isn't quite as nice, it's maybe not quite as robust, but um, it's pretty good too. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just securing these clips so that the model has the shape that I want it to have. In particular, I released that last pleat right here so that it can lie quite flat. So now you can see we basically have the finished shape of the model. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this small travel perfume bottle, which is just filled with water. And it gives a very, very fine mist of water. And what I'm just going to do is um, I'm just going to spritz it once on this side and then again on this side so that it's slightly damp. And now I'm going to let this sit for about an hour and then the paper has dried and then when I take off these clips then the paper will stay in this shape. So this is your finished tessellation adulthood designed by Ilan Garibi and Chagai Golan and I hope you like it and if you want more details on how to fold this tessellation and many others and how conceptually you put these together into a tessellation of 2x2 two two or 4x4 four four and so on, do check out Ilan's new book Origami Tessellations for Everyone. I highly recommend you get the book. Be sure to also visit Ilan's website garibiorigami.com and his Flickr stream. And if you liked this video, do let me know by giving it a thumbs up, commenting below and sharing it with others. Now, how about you check out my video explaining Ilan's approach of molecules and designing tessellations. Or fold another tessellation following one of my tutorials. Finally, subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss my next videos. I hope to see you around and, as always, happy folding!